as you know, the profit of uh, mining is decreasing now, and uh, how should we deal with all this uh, computer power? And uh, what do you think about knowledge mining? Well, first of all, that's the humongous industry. And to answer your question, there are multiple angles. So, absolutely, there will be multiple different minings, there will be different ICOs coming up. And I do believe that people who understand the concept and industry will be the ones who are going to be judging it. Of course, there will be the good ones and bad ones. So we're the ones coming up on the stage because we believe in our concept. So the question is how others will judge it, how will they understand that? So to answer your question, it will be great, it will be disaster. It will bring some good news and positive changes and possibly destroy existing businesses. So it's kind of hard to say this is exactly what's going to happen. What I can tell for sure, it will bring a lot of changes. So that's how it answers your question. Do you own maybe some mining equipment? Well, our company does, of course. And when I was starting, I was the blockchain as the newbie. I was playing with the concept. And of course, you get the rewards from Bitcoin or from the Ethereum. It's a quite interesting concept. So of course, our company does have it. I used to have it, now I don't have it. Um, I joined the project Gennaro Network as the researcher, then I joined it as the head of CIS. So I look from, from the marketing perspective, not from the technical perspective. I do believe I have a, a lot to learn myself. So what I can tell is there'll be more and more minings. They still exist and they will grow, as I said previously to your first question. So um, as you said, probably Bitcoin is going to lead the way. That is this the um, battle as the first speaker giving the talk between the um, Charlie Lee and Bitcoin founder. And on 13th, of, as far as I know, to my best knowledge, uh, November or, or, or December, there'll be a, a, a new frontier, probably. I'm not quite sure. I do believe in Bitcoin. I do invest in Bitcoin. And I think it's going to be the future promising stable sort of its dollar of its kind. But um, everything is subject to change. You never know because this is something new. It's the new industrial revolution in our age. Um, we're open for changes, and I'm very excited about that future. Right now, the objective is moving from the quantity into quality. And the, the system will sort out useless minings and sort out uh, or probably compile useful mining. So probably there'll be sort of internal cleaning and all the quality projects will remain. So that's how I understand that. Maybe I'm wrong, but let's wait for the news. Uh, just like ourselves, we're coming up with our ICO, we will be selling. We are interested in multiple other projects that we believe can be our partners. We can join forces to work together. There are some others that I'm interested in. Specifically, the, this project sounds pretty interesting. I study AI myself. I, I study Chinese knowledge sharing platforms and a combination of AI and knowledge sharing in a blockchain context, something quite interesting. So this is something I will be definitely looking at and probably invest some of my money. There are multiple investors. So in a traditional concept, there are VCs or angel investors where you come, pitch the idea, they give you, maybe they might not give you the money. In most cases, uh, if it's come to the ICO, it's most of the crowdfunding. Nobody says, nobody says, our project will take off or our project will be successful. That's why people have a white paper that describes people have an idea and it's up to you how you understand a project, how you judge or evaluate the project. And it's up on you to say, yes, I believe in idea. Team is great. I'll put my money into the project. But in my best knowledge, well, according to my best knowledge, 99% of companies never say our company will work for sure. This is our research, this is what we do, and this is what we expect. So that's the deliver of the information. And I guess these guys have the same concept. But ideas can be great, but execution can be a completely different story. So that's how I look at the, at the concept. So this is risk of its kind. You either lose or you win. China is uh, somehow submitting its new laws to consider. Russia is considering sort of regulation. But blockchain, by definition, is not regulatory entity, it's decentralized. So there is the conflict of interest. Um, South Korea is coming up with new regulations. So, so far, different countries have different attitude towards the blockchain. For example, in Dubai, they're very open. In uh, Nordic countries like Sweden, Norway, Finland, they are very open. Georgia, Tbilisi, for example, they are very open. One of the very first countries that applied blockchain in the government, uh, on a government level. So some countries are embracing, some are not embracing. It really depends how you see uh, the opportunities in the future, government style. So it's not like blockchain decides everything. 
It's the blockchain surrounded by all traditional entities, political systems, banking systems, social aspects. So how they can work together to make new changes. So that's where the story comes in. So um, again, it's the change. Again, this is something nobody has seen. This is something nobody has expected. A very few people, a couple of thousands of people on the planet among seven billion understand the blockchain. So how they can deliver and how others can embrace, this is something very new. And that's why here we're coming up with our presentations to tell what we think and what others think and let's see what where it's going to have where it's going to take us in the future. Blockchain я занялся буквально говоря месяц в шесть назад серьезно. А до этого я занимался искусственный интеллект. До этого я до сих пор изучаю искусственный интеллект, концепт share economy, как Uber, Airbnb. И вот внедрение share economy, искусственного интеллекта в контексте блокчейна это то, что меня сейчас больше интересует. То есть выгодно всем и публике минимальные расходы и организаторам проекта то, что они дают публике или народу определенные платформы. Это не то, что Инвестор приходит, дает деньги, получает. И компания зарабатывает миллионы, инвесторы миллионы. А люди просто пользуются, и все. А когда люди тоже имеют способ заработать и пользоваться, или тратить, инвестировать деньги, это выгодно всем. Вопрос, как правильно подать информацию. Насколько люди будут открыты к этому, как к новым технологиям. Тут много определенных моментов, насколько люди образованы в этом плане. Вот я смотрю на, на Украину, на Беларусь и определенную часть России, там, где очень сильные математики, сильные программисты. Mm -hmm. Китайцы имеют сейчас очень большие суммы. Они за 20 лет стали миллионерами. 500 миллионов людей из нечества э, стали среднего класса. Mm -hmm. Люди, которые могут позволить себе купить минимум 10 домов в Киеве. Mm -hmm. С сегодняшними ценами, например. Mm -hmm. а, Япония, Европа, опять-таки, они, они исторически были образованными. То есть все тихо-тихо меняет. Технологии — это как платформа, которая помогает мне достигнуть определенной цели намного быстрее, чем это было возможно сегодня или вчера. Обязательно будет вариант для традиционных бизнесов выживать, если правильно переделывать свою стратегию. Но без цифровых платформ будет трудновато.